All right, hello everybody. This is SpongeZilla from SlingingDirt.com, also known as Marcus Mackey. I'm going to do a new tutorial for you guys doing a little bit of video work. Um, we're going to start off in Photoshop with our first tutorial. This tutorial is basically to take a set of vector numbers, you know, or it works with vector lettering or vector shapes, um, and bring it into Illustrator so that you can do some editing with it. Um, the reason why I'm doing this tutorial is there's a lot of people out there that are a little bit more comfortable with working with Photoshop. Um, they're used to using the vector tools in Photoshop. They're used to how Photoshop's laid out. And uh, so therefore, you know, when you create a shape in there, um, it makes it a little easier, you know, to use what you're comfortable with. Um, I can tell you that if you get a chance to do some Illustrator work, and get some experience with it. It does have a lot more tools for doing vector work. It's actually a far pro, far more preferable uh, application for doing vector work. Um, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna start off, I have this uh, set of numbers I created a long time ago. Um, they're based off of uh, my favorite local race car driver. Part of the reason why I used to go buy a Mackie 27 on uh, 4M.net years ago guys by the name of Bob Pullman Jr. He used to race late models. Now he runs modifieds. Still the same car number. Still about the same style numbers too. So I'm going to open up this set of numbers and as you can see I've got two sets of vector numbers. Um, I'm going to focus on one set because obviously if you figure out how to do this with one set you can do a whole nother set as well. Now as you can tell over here I have both sets of numbers that I'm clicking on right now and they're not combined together. Um, one of the, the parts of Photoshop that I have always felt has been a little bit weak is the ability to actually create a compound shape. Um, there are ways of doing it, but it's not exactly the easiest, in my opinion, to uh, make happen. Um, as you can see, I've got them combined together you know, by selection, but I can't choose to combine them with this button up here. It doesn't seem like it works very well. Um, there's a way to do that in Illustrator once we get there. Um, but anyhow, um, one of the ways that you can go about doing it, um, assuming you have one shape that's just one big continuous shape, is you would select on the shape, you go up to the file menu, go to export, and then click pass to Illustrator. This method will actually take the shape and create an Illustrator file on your desktop once you're done and it'll allow you to take it in and when you get into Illustrator you're going to be kind of startled because if you have your color in Illustrator selected as white which for the most part generally is the default color um, once you select this and export it's going to load up and you're going to go there's nothing in here <laughs> but uh, generally speaking once you've gone in there and if you click to the right on an Illustrator layer there's a little ellipse over here when you click on it it selects it and you'll actually see the shape of the path selected and then all I have to do is go over to your color picker like you would in Photoshop the foreground color select it and it will create the inner fill for that particular shape now the way I'm gonna go about doing this is a little bit different than what I just said that's one method of going about it the other method is to just literally open up a copy of Adobe Illustrator which I have a file open up right here and you're going to go back to Illustrator, or I mean uh, Photoshop, and we're going to select the path. And if you notice, if I double click on it, or if I click on that one and I double click it again, how it gets all these little points, those are your guide points around the shape. So if we want to take that into Illustrator, all we have to do, click and drag, and there's the shape. As you can see, it dragged it in as a white shape again, as a default. And it's not really white, it's actually transparent inside. But if I click on the fill and I change the color, um, as long as it's active, and I select black, it's now a black shape. I can do the same thing with the two. And I drag it in. Oop. And there it is. So then we go back in. I make sure the two is selected. Go over here, change the color. I have the shape. Oop. Didn't shake the color for some reason. Alright. 
So now you're going to look and you say, well, I've got these two shapes here, but they're not next to each other. So all I had to do is select them both. And one of the things I was talking about with Illustrator with regards to tools and stuff, there's this one that's called Vertical Align Center up here in the menu. Um, there's a whole bunch of different menus up here, you can see. So I'm going to click Vertical Align Center, and it snaps them together like that. And then what you can do is select your 7 or your 2, whichever one you prefer. Hold the shift key down, and you can slowly move it back and forth just by using the arrow keys on your keyboard, left and right. And once you get it to where you're happy with the shape, where it's positioned, you just click off and you have it right there. Another very cool tool that you can use in Illustrator is you can actually make a compound path. If I select both of them, I go up to Object Menu, I go to Path, and I can uh, choose, um, actually, I don't know what this is. Oh, here, I go to Compound Path, and I click Make. Rather than have them two as separate shapes now, now anytime I select it, they're both set. You can actually undo that, too. You can go to Compound Path and Release, and it takes it back to a separate two and a separate scene. That's a really quick tutorial on it. I'm going to show you another unique thing here in a few minutes with another tutorial that's going to basically show you how you can really spiff that number up and give it some outlines and you know the strokes with actual sharp edges. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial. There will be many more to follow coming soon.